Hello everybody and welcome to Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show. Today on the show we have Mr. Mark Steinenbach. He is a wedding officiant. Okay. In downtown Toronto. And um, and he marries couples. So we thought we'd have him on the show today to talk about um, what he does. So welcome to the show today, sir. Thank you. Nice to be here, Stephanie. Okay. So did I say that right, Mark? Steinenbach. Okay. Steinenbach. And you are a... A wedding officiant. Okay. Now, today on the show, the reason I wanted you on the show is because I know that you marry gay couples. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that as far as, um, do you associate with ministers and preachers? And how do they feel about what you do when you are marrying gay couples? Some... It, it, it's a it's a it's a gray area, I guess, because there are some people who do marry them, mm -hmm. marry gay people and lesbians. There are people who will not marry them for their religious belief. Like the Catholic Church does not marry gay couples because that's not it goes against their beliefs. Whereas the Anglican Church will do wedding blessings of, of same sex couples. I do actual marriages of gay and lesbian couples. I've married a lot of them actually. Uh, here in Toronto who have come from other countries who come here because it's safe for them to be married here we're in their home country this would be a, a big no-no and probably a punishable no-no to be married to a same-sex person so I think you know I always talk about at the, during my we all my weddings I do a little thing about what is a wedding well, and a wedding is really a celebration of love. That's all a wedding is. No matter if it be a small event with just a couple and their two witnesses, or it be 400 people in a grand hall someplace, we celebrate the fact that two people were fortunate enough to find each other. The person that they clicked with, the person that they knew in their heart was the person that was their soulmate, the person that they wanted or are meant to spend a majority of their life with. It has nothing to do with your religion, the country you come from, your sex, your eye color, your hair color, none of that matters. What we celebrate is the fact that two people found and fell in love and that they've extended that to the people that they want to have present as their guests or their witnesses. They invite the people they want to be with on the day of that big milestone in their lives. And those people in turn show their love and care for the couple by taking time out of their schedule, usually on a Saturday or a Sunday, by coming out and witnessing that moment, that special moment when those two people say, yes, we want to be partners in life for life. Mm -hmm. So that is, and I do that at every wedding. I talk about what it is. We celebrate is love and two people finding it. That's all, a, that's all a wedding really is. Okay. Now, what I, I know today is such a big thing because this is Pronoun TV. We would just like to ask you, what are your pronouns? Um, he and him. Okay. Now, when have you ever married a, a Jewish couple and a Palestinian couple? Yes, I mean, as a matter of fact, I have. And I've actually married a Russian and a Ukrainian mm -hmm. who, who um, actually I just remarried a couple who were married in the, the, the Ukraine. He was Russian, she was from the Ukraine. They had to divorce while they were over there for there were certain reasons that they didn't want to share with me, but they actually had to divorce while they were in that in, in Ukraine. Then they came to Canada, they got settled here, and then they remarried each other. So it's very funny that I can meet people of those uh, backgrounds. They can get along very easily, but the two countries can't get along. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I'm marrying a, a Jewish person to a Palestinian. I'm marrying a Russian to a Ukrainian. They get along, they found love, but for some reason the countries can't do it. It's, it's, and maybe they need to sit down with some of these couples and find out what they're doing right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met a couple that understands your or seeking your services, but yet they refuse to marry um, to, for you to marry them because of you've had same-sex couples or you've had these other different religions? Not one, not one. I have had. I, normally, what I get told by people is that they're thrilled that I, that I'm open to doing all those marriages that I'm, I'm welcoming and I'm warm and I want to be a, play a small role 
in these people's special day. I've not had one person be negative about it, mm -hmm. which is, it's funny, I've never even thought about it until now you just asked that question. Okay. Um, now, in between, have you ever married a black couple? Yes, many. Okay, many. All right, now, how do you feel about the 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 backpedaling on marriage, the same sex marriage, all of the hate um, and um, hatredness that's going towards the LGBT community now. And what do you think? I mean, mainly with Florida and all of the laws that they're trying to turn back now. Like, let's say with you know the books, Black History being um, read in schools. Also about the LGBT. Um, deciding what gender you are or how you identify or how you you know these things are now are in the courts and because of school and maybe because of religion and maybe because of the difference of opinion what do you think how do you think the lgbt community should approach the new government that's coming into office now um, about trying to make sure that their rights and their voices are heard. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's sad that people who fought long and hard at, 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 with, with equal rights for marriages, equal rights for blacks, for everybody, and there's, now there's a group of people who are not happy about what has happened and, it's, and it's, you call back I, I think it's sad that that's happening. There's, a, there's so much hatred in the world. and. For whatever reason, I don't understand. You, you get so much more out of loving people and caring for people and taking care of each other than you do expelling all that hate. Because all that hatred does is fester in you. It makes you actually a very miserable person, a very mean person. And I don't understand why those people want to be like that. I don't know, maybe they've never sat down and had a conversation with a gay person or a black person or someone who they, they, they have such strong opinions about. Do, how well do they know the situation? Do they know anybody that's in that situation? Maybe they maybe they need to be better educated. <laughs> maybe they need to be better educated before they start taking up these causes and saying uh, we're going to roll it back and, and those people shouldn't be married together because they're the same sex or those people shouldn't be this because they're black or Palestinian or whatever. I just don't get it. That, I know a lot of people are, they call themselves spiritual now, not religious, but even people who are spiritual, it's based on the Bible. And the Bible is a lot of things that you can read into, it has nothing to do with religion. Mm -hmm. It has nothing, being, being kind and loving to your fellow man doesn't have to have anything to do with God. That's just a common sense rule. Mm -hmm. that you take care of each other. We get further by taking care of each other and by loving each other and looking out for each other than we ever possibly can by being against each other and hating each other. We're stronger together as a group than we are as individuals. And I just don't get that these people are... They're battling a lost cause, really. Mm -hmm. they're, they're putting a lot of time, effort, money, energy into a lost cause. Take the time, find some people meet them, sit down with them, talk to them, listen to their side of the story, put mm -hmm. your side of, uh, away for a little while, and listen to what the other side has to present. And I think that they would learn a lot um, that they did not know that might convince them that what they're thinking is totally inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Now, as a senior, as a senior person, um, who, I'm, I'm assuming... <laughs> who, who are we talking about? Is there a senior here? <laughs> Now, you know they wanted to roll back the retirement age. I know. So, what do you think about that? I I'm totally <laughs> against it. I think, I don't understand that. Um, so many studies have been done, so many studies have been done that actually show that people shouldn't work past the age of 55 because our bodies aren't meant for that. Our lifespan has, has tripled almost in what it used to be because of our modern day medicine. So mm -hmm. people only had to work a specific amount of time. A lot of people never lived past 40. Mm -hmm. Now we're living to be 80, 90, 100, and they still want you to work as if you were 50. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for people, and I've, I've met so many 
family where someone has worked till 65, sometimes even 70 because they were allowed to. They forced themselves to work and they retired. And a month later, I'm reading their obituary in the newspaper I'm hearing about because they worked almost up until the day they died. So all they did was work to live. That's all they did was work to live all their lives. Mm -hmm. They really, when it came time that they had free time, time they could enjoy life, it was snapped away from them just like that. I think that we have a population of people who are looking for work. Mm -hmm. Let people retire at 55. Let them enjoy their lives. Let them find a small part-time job if they want to. But full-time work should be for younger people. Mm -hmm. Let's put the young people who have talent to work, who can't find jobs right now, and let the ones that are 55 and older sort of enjoy their lives. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now let's talk a little bit about the gay community, the actual gay community, and the decline of the gay infrastructure, that's what I will say. Um, because we're having, like I said, these laws about backpedaling because of the same-sex laws or the right to be who you are, the transgendered laws that are all in place, and also about the woke movement. The, the, the woke movement, that's what they're calling it. How do you feel about that? What do you, what do you think should happen? I had hoped, because I did read some articles not long ago that said that the woke movement is losing losing strength. It's losing its power. Because a lot of people who joined it are now realizing how ridiculous it is. Mm -hmm. The woke movement is really taking the pendulum from the left side and it swung completely over to the right as far as you can possibly go. Mm -hmm. You need to bring that back to the center. The woke movement is, is, I think, losing strength. I think people are realizing that a lot of the stuff that they sort of thought they believed in or, or supported is wrong. Or they're finally waking up and realizing they may have supported a couple of the things that woke sort of represented, mm -hmm. but they've just gone to the extreme. They've just gone to the extreme. And, it, and the woke community is not a big community as far as I'm concerned. It's a, it's a prime example of the tail wagging the dog. The louder that a person or group screams, no matter how small they are, the more attention they get. And the woke movement was well enough organized that they are loud. They, they're small, but they're loud. So they get a lot of attention. They got a lot of press and a lot of media. And the minute you get a lot of press and a lot of media, it sends a message to people that it's a strong movement. It's mm -hmm. a st strong movement and they have a lot of, of persuasion, which is not always accurate. All it was was a group that was well enough organized that they got good press. Mm -hmm. And the louder people are and the more outrageous they are, the better chance you're going to get press. Because good things, and when people get along, when there's no wars, that, that doesn't sell newspapers. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sell newspapers. It doesn't sell media. What they want is things that are going to cause chaos or cause people to wake up and say, what, what was that? What did I just hear? You know, that's what the media is selling to people. And I think the woke movement is, is losing steam. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about, in, in, in closing, let's talk about the election in the U.S. And how important do you think, I'm, I'm not going to ask one here because we'll get so many different comments about who you think should win and, 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 and might win and, um, and what will be the fallout from all of that. So what do you think about the election coming up in the U.S.? It's a very important election for a lot of different groups and people and the voice of America um, and of Americans, either um, at home or internationally, abroad, wherever they vote from. What do you think is going to happen now? Do you think they're going to choose the right person for the most important office in the world, the most important job in the world? It's, I think it's going to be interesting, and I think it's, it's hard to tell what's going to happen because... Now, with, with President Biden mm -hmm. um, stepping aside and saying, uh, you know, that the, the people that were his advisors are right, that he, it, he, he's not really strong enough and healthy enough to lead mm -hmm. them into another term, 
that now they're also questioning, well, if that's the case, why is he even holding on to his office? Shouldn't he give up his office now and, and, and let Kamala Harris t t take it on? That's a, that's a question that he's going to have to. I Truthfully, I think he's probably strong enough to finish his, his, his term up. I think it also lends itself to, not only in the States, but here in Canada, do we need to limit terms of how people serve in office beyond a certain age? We just talked about, you know, retirement mm -hmm. age is not. Should we, should we be saying, once you hit a certain age, that you're really not strong enough mentally, physically, spiritually to carry out the role of that office because it's a very stressful situation. Mm -hmm. So do we really want an 80 year old leading one of the major powerhouses of the world um, when it's probably a job better off we do the stress for somebody younger to do it? And, it, and it, that isn't even just a question for now. You go back to Ronald Reagan when Ronald Reagan was president. Mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan was not well in his final years. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if you read any of the the books that are out now about his life, his wife Nancy was calling the shots behind closed doors. It was Nancy who was running the White House and telling Ronald what to do as president. <laughs> That's how it boiled down because she was trying to help him save face. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happening with Joe Biden right now. I know that he's probably in a predicament. And I, and I know we also have the, the situation with, with uh, former President Donald Trump wanting the office again, who has certainly garnered a lot of support from people uh, that, that a few months ago thought that he was the devil incarnate. Now they're mm -hmm. supporting him. Mm -hmm. Nikki, I uh, forget what her last name is, who, who was running Haley. against him. Haley. Um, and, and, sh and now she's supporting him. So I don't know what happened to convince her. Why all of a sudden did the, the most hated person that you've ever met become the person you want to support <laughs> to become the United States of America a second time around? I. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. And I think we've got a few months yet to go once Camilla gets the actual endorsement because mm -hmm. we have to wait till uh, two or three weeks. It's in August when they're calling it the coronation um, mm -hmm. that sh she'll be the new candidate to run. Truthfully, I don't think they had a choice. I think it would have looked really, really bad if they hadn't have supported the current vice president. Because what, what does that message, does that send to the population? Mm -hmm. If you're not gonna support the person that you just had in office as the vice president and you wanna nominate and have somebody else run. So I don't think they had much of a choice of who to select and who to put in that part. Now they've got to make it work. They've mm. got to take Camilla and they've got, to, they've got to dress her and make her the person that they want to fit as the next president of the United States. Mm -hmm. But I don't, whatever happens, it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. because we could have the first um, woman of color as the president of the United States mm -hmm. or we could have one of the people that is is probably the most hated politician in in our time mm -hmm. go back into office. It, it's going to be very interesting in what happens, and and I think whatever happens, it's going to set the world on its ear, and we all better buckle our seatbelts because <laughs> I think it's going to be a bumpy ride. Mm. And on that note, I just want to say. I just want to say we are here at the Dufferin Mall today with Mr. Mark Steininba and um, a wedding official. And he's given us his opinion about a lot of different issues that are in the news today. So thank you guys so much for supporting Pronoun TV. Until next time, my friends, take care of yourself, stay fabulous, and remember, you better get out and vote. All of you better get out and vote. And right here from Canada, we are going, Mr. Mark Steinberg. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Thank sir. Thank you for having me. It was wonderful. I enjoyed it. Wonderful.